Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about the create table command. Now this command is a part of the SQL standard. After writing uh, the command, the table name is going to is specified as well as the column definitions. So at minimum, we need to provide the column name and what type of data this column is going to contain we need to specify these two things. So the column name and what type of data it is going to it is going to contain. So the standard SQL data types, I have listed them out for you so you know what they are. Now, whenever you're trying to create a database, sometimes your database is going to throw some errors or you will not be able to create it just because you have selected the, the wrong data type. For example, you have specified the character varying to 50, but the user enters like 60 character long string. Then you're, then that data will not be stored. You're going to, uh, that logic will throw an error. So you need to be very careful whenever you are creating a database and for each column you specify the column name which is the easier part but the difficult part is selecting the data type along with the range of it so we have the common data types of our character character varying binary small int or small integer bi uh, integer big int or big integer boolean date time and time step we're going to go over them one by one so character is going to have like whenever the user want to enter a string you want the user to enter a string of a specific um, number of characters so n is going to be um, set n to statically what it means is that the user can enter only like for example if you specify 10 only 10 characters that is going to be the required when we have character varying, it could be less than 10, it could be 5, but it can never be greater than 10 because it is dynamically, it is, that's why it's called character varying. Again, can never go above the range, but it could go lower than that. Binary is going to be hexadecimal data. Small integer is starting from negative 32,768. Uh, negative 2 raised to the power of 15 to positive 2 raised to the power of 15. So these are considered small integers in SQL. Integers that are considered from this number all the way to this number. Keep in mind, it is 2 raised to the power 31 minus 1. After you raise it, you calculate it, then you're going to basically say minus 1. That's why it is 6, 4, 7, and this is 6, 4, 8. Big integer is this big data, this big number, to this big number. So any number from this range to this range, you need to select big integer. Uh, Boolean, we know it is true and false. Date is year, month, and day in, the, in this specific format. And we have time, hour, minute, second in the format this, where F is going to be the fractional part. Then we have timestamp, which is both date and time. Now, how can we actually create a table? Now, before creating a table, we, we have to provide a context, an execution context for our queries. So we are going to say use SQL underscore course, and then we are going to run this. So if I run it, you can see immediately the SQL course has been selected. So let's zoom in a little. And afterwards, now um, we can have now here what I want to do is I want to create a table that's all this lecture is about but I need to tell you something that uh, you can have multiple table multiple tables in multiple databases with the same name why because their execution context is going to be different so I can have theoretically I can have a dip, a country's table within the Halali DB and a country's table with the same name inside the SQL course because the country's table in the HalaliDB belongs to this context and the country's table within the SQL course belongs to the SQL course's context. So they are not like, um, they are not interacting with each other. So you can use that. Now, how does this actually work? I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Uh, we are going to say create table. And uh, what is going to be the table name? I'm just going to call it because this is SQL course. We're going to have students. You're going to open up parentheses. 
So you can go every way with this. Some people like like to create it this way. They open the first parenthesis there and the end of it here, and they enter data in between. Uh, you can go any way that you want. It's basically like a preference. So I'm just going to provide it here. I think this is a little bit more readable. Whenever you're starting off, whenever you get advanced, of course, you're going to change this. So within the table, we're going to we have to specify the column names, at least column names and the column data type. So the first column, I'm going to call it student ID. What is the data type? It is going to be integer then comma so this is the first column what is the second column the second co column is going to be first name now um, there is a best practice here and that is whenever you're trying to create a database or whenever you're trying to design a database database design is well beyond the scope of this course and uh, I shouldn't tell you a lot about it because it's, it tends to attend it tends to get a little bit confusing but uh, this is something that you should know that whenever you see column names which are plural you have to like think about that and you have to know immediately that that is a very bad database design why because whenever you're trying to create a single column uh, that specific column must belong to one specific thing one specific data and when it belongs to that specific data you don't need to provide it with like an s an extra s just to make it plural so we don't need to provide it like we don't need to say first name first names last names we know it belongs to first name so we know everything within this column is always going to be first name so that is something that you need to keep in mind. Now, this first name is going to be a varying uh, a character varying. So the length could vary. And we are going to say var, var char. And the maximum limit, I'm going to set it to 255. So even if someone has like a long name, they can still insert it. And eventually, last name. So last name is the name of the column varchar is going to be the data type along with the limit 255 then we are going to execute this let's save that let's execute it there we go it says you you saw that it took like a second to run like 1.718 seconds and now let's refresh this and you can see we have a collapsible uh we have an expandable button and within here we have students within the students we have student id first name and last name that's it for this lecture see you in the next one